Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. So we've just prayed in the, the room next door. Father, we thank you for your presence, for your love, and for your mercy. Father, guide us a few minutes we stand. Hide us behind the cross. That, Father, they didn't come to hear Edmund. Father, we came to hear a word from you this afternoon. Father, guide us and direct us in all things. Lord, thank you for being with this family, for blessing them. Lord, just continue to surround them and lift them up. Father, many of them have traveled, Lord, as they go back home at the appointed time. Lord, I pray you give them travel and mercy and watch over them, bless them. Father, just continue to remind them, Father, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us and that you're still in control. Father, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, Eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither have they into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Today we come to celebrate the homegoing of Brother Bob Roberts. Um, sometimes I'll call him Mr. Bob, sometimes I'll call him Brother Bob, just ever how it comes to my mind. But at the age of 88, passed away on Thursday afternoon. He was born March the 10th, 1932, in Telmore, to the late Cecil and Thelma Archer Roberts. Mr. Bob served in the U.S. Army in the 50s. He later worked as a lab and x-ray technician and retired from there in Inverness, Florida to come back home to the family farm in Telmore. He was a Christian and a member of Newburn Baptist Church. In addition to his parents, he's preceded in death by his wife, Miss Jakey, son Wren, brother Lamar, one sister Shirley, cousins Hoyt, Herbert, and Fred. He's survived by his daughter, Shannon, husband Prescott, three grandchildren, Autumn, husband Kurt, also granddaughter Alyssa and grandson Austin, sister-in-law Miss Ginger and husband Ken, several nieces and nephews today as we come to honor and to celebrate his home going. Uh, we know that life is but a vapor. 88 years and awesome blessing Shannon shared last night that most likely he was he had lived the longest of anyone ever in their family, an awesome testimony of God's grace and God's mercy. This afternoon, we, uh, we're going to listen to a song that Austin recorded uh, some time ago. For, uh, for Mr. Bob asked him to record it, and we're going to share that this afternoon with you.
Mr. Bob wouldn't want anything long. He wouldn't want much attention. Him and the Lord even worked it out. You didn't even have to miss the Georgia game to be here today. <laughs> um, he loved his country, served in the U.S. Army. He loved his family. He loved the Lord. He, like all of us, had our ways. None of us are perfect. We thank God every day for his grace and for his mercy. He was married to the love of his life for 62 years. And I could not believe it had been three years and three months ago since she left us. But the last three years have, have not been the same. And as any of you have walked in that road, no, it, it has not been easy. But Thursday, the Lord answered a lot of prayers. You say, what you mean? Well, as many of you older folks, and as we get to that point, we pray that the Lord works things out, that we don't have to go to a nursing home, we don't have to spend a long time in the hospital. And, and yes, it's difficult on a family the way you're doing this, but there are things worse than death. And the Lord blessed him. The Lord answered that prayer. He was home Thursday sitting in Tellmore, and he was home Thursday, sitting in heaven. God is good. God is good. Prayer number two, he longed for many years to, to see Wren. And to see Jakey Bun. Thursday night, that prayer was true. After 62 years of living with a maid, I can't imagine the change of life. The three years and three months of separation also ended Thursday. No answered prayer. Not to mention, as already said, possibly, possibly being the on, oldest family member ever to reach this milestone of almost 89 years. All this was good. And I thought back as I was reading and studying over my notes again before I left home, what a difference a day makes. What a difference a day makes. I had a church member at Shady Grove that had back surgery. I didn't go that Thursday afternoon. For some reason, she was in Jessup. I went Friday afternoon. She was talking, everything going good. Later that day, she went home. I text her about 4 o'clock. She'd had back surgery, been in a lot of pain. She said, I'm home. I'm feeling good and no pain. What a difference a day makes. That was about 6 o'clock Friday afternoon. 8 o'clock Saturday morning, she went home to glory. Blood clot apparently for whatever reason. But my point is, what a difference a day makes. That was her text to me on Friday night because she was pain-free. We think about Brother Bob and what a difference a day makes. No more heartache, no more trouble, no more sorrow, no more pain. But the most important thing about all that I've said is that he knew Jesus. This afternoon we gather with broken hearts. This afternoon we gather with tears, and that's okay to cry. But most importantly, he knew Jesus. And today, when we leave the cemetery, we're not going to say goodbye. We're going to say, see you later. He just beat us home. And I believe by the signs of the time and the reading of the scripture that that separation won't be long. Jakey Bun beat him home by three years and three months. 
I don't know, we may see him in two days. We may see him in two years. We may see him, the Bible says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be changed. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, for... For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, that we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Verse 6 says, therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we're at home in the body, here on earth, we're absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. But we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, that we may be accepted by him, accepted of him. I promise you, he loved you. Shannon, Prescott, Alyssa. Austin, and the girlfriend whose name just will not come to me. Yes. Marissa, Miss Ginger, Ken, all of you, but he wouldn't come back. He wouldn't come back. The Bible tells us in John chapter 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Brother Bob preached his own funeral. Each one of us does that day by day. We preach our own funeral. Yeah, we're gathered here for a celebration. We're gathered here for a homecoming a home going, we call it a funeral, but we preach our funeral every day. We preach it every day. If I didn't share a little bit about salvation, Miss Jakey Bunn had come back and slap me on the head and she'd give me a note at the door when I went out of something I missed. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners, sinners lost or sinners saved. Billy Graham, Charles Stanley, whoever you put a lot of confidence in as a minister, they were all lost and on their way to hell, and they needed Jesus. And they got saved one day. John 3, 16 reminds us, For God so loved the world that gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But if you want to walk over the blood of Jesus to get there, he'll let you. Not that he wants you to go there. He loves each and every one of us. First John reminds us that if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us. The devil says, ah, God won't have you. God, can't ha won't go. God won't take you. God can't have you. You can't go to heaven. There's nothing the Bible says that the blood won't cover except just rejection, just walking off from him. Romans 10 and 13 reminds us for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mr. Bob's at home. Jakey Bun's at home. Wren's at home. On the authority of God's word, not Edmund Thrift, but on the authority of God's word, if you want to see them again, you've got to go by the cross. And soon and very soon there'll be a glad reunion day like we've never had here on earth. Be better than any chicken and dumplings and chocolate cake. That's about as good on this side as we're going to get it. But on the other side, joy unspeakable. So do you know him today? Are you saved today? If this was your funeral and your home going, would your family leave with the peace that this family leaves with? I came to know and love this family about 34 years ago. And my prayers are with you. I always meant a lot. Like everybody else, we don't visit and we don't contact and we don't see each other. But I love you and our prayers are with you. Nobody told me to say this, but a special thanks to Marissa. She was not just a neighbor and a caregiver, almost like a granddaughter to them. And they loved her dearly and, and she did what she could, not for any reason, but just because she was able and God gave her that ability. And they appreciated you.
What a difference a day makes. What a difference a day makes. As I started out of the house, a song kept ringing in my head, and I wouldn't surprise this on Shannon this afternoon, and, but I want to read you some words, and you can look it up later. It says, Wish You Were Here by the Kingsman. I can just see them walking on the shores of heaven, praising the Lord and watching the tide roll in. Friends that have gone on, oh, how I miss Oh, how I miss you so. And somehow I know, if you could, that you'd let me know that you're doing fine and it doesn't hurt anymore. Things couldn't be better and that heaven is worth waiting for. That you miss me too. And till then you'll be praying. And I know if you could, you could talk to me now that here's what you'd say to me. Wish you were here. It's such a beautiful place. Wish you were here, nothing but clear sunny days. Well, it never rains and no one complains and we haven't seen a tear. We're having a great time. Wish you were here. To a child of God, We don't just put all of our eggs in one bucket and wait till we die. The Bible says that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That we're going through corona and the funeral home and sickness and unexpected decisions. That we're not alone. And yes, when the race is run and life is over, to hear him say, well done, welcome home. Miss Sherry's going to come lead us in a song. I've got a good building it up, so it's real, real, easy, real easy for you now to come lead this song. I'm sorry. Thank you. Y'all going to stand and help her. Please. I wanted to say first, um, love. There's not a man that I know that loved any more than Bob did. Amen. He not only loved his family, he loved his community, he loved to help people in need. I will, I will remember my whole life. Bob Roberts would gather up groceries, he'd go to the grocery store just to buy for the Salvation Army. And that's something that we all need to do. I don't do it. But that needs to be a legacy lived on through us that we love our neighbors, we love people that need are needy, and we need to be able to share the things that we have with the less fortunate. Amen. Where that came from, thank you, God. I don't know. Amen. Anyway, Miss Jakey started this tradition, if it's a tradition that you call it, but um, for years and years and years, I've known that I would sing, lead, I'll fly away with, with the congregation at their funerals. I'm blessed and thankful that I'm able to do that. If you'll all stand, we don't have any music, but we're going to make it through it. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away when the shadows of this life have grown, I'll fly away like a bird from prison bars has flown, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, 
Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Thursday evening, Bob reached out his hand, and he said, Lord, please take me to the promised land. Jakey and Jesus then took him away. Oh, what a glorious day. Amen. I'll fly away, fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away, fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. A loving husband he was, I oh, thought about many times when I was at Newburn, Miss Jakey would be working at Nichols, and uh, he'd get that phone call, he'd go pick her up from school, take her to the doctor, get a shot for the migraines, take her home, put her into bed for about three days. Life rolled on, life rolled on. Two become one for better, for worse, a good example. Thank you for the privilege and the honor of standing here today. The flag on Brother Bob's coffin this afternoon represents his military service in the U.S. Army. After the funeral, it will be removed and sent to his eldest granddaughter, Autumn, who is unable to be here today because she is also serving in the United States Army today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being so good unto us. Thank you, Lord, on days like today we can praise you, we can celebrate. We know that, Lord, this is not the end. We thank you, Lord, for a husband, a daddy, a grandpa, a brother that loved that showed that love, that helped others, that reached out, that allowed you to work through him. Father, I pray if there's one today that's never surrendered to you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit has dealt with them in such a way that, Lord, they couldn't go to sleep tonight without making peace with you. Father, it's another reminder on life's journey that it's appointed a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. Father, thank you for one day, Mr. Bob, making that calling and election sure and surrendering to you. Father, continue to be with this family. Lord, you've given them many, many, many precious memories. Father, help them to hold them dear. There'll be days when they pick up that phone and they'll dial the number and then they'll hang up because there's no one on the other end to answer. They'll pull up to the house and realize there's no one inside to meet them. But one day, one day there will be. One day we'll have a homecoming that will not end. Joy unspeakable around his throne. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for the peace that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen.